Hello, Scratch Island users. Long time no see. Well, actually, <laughs> you've never seen me before. I'm not cool, Scratcher. You might be able to tell by my voice. I'm actually hexagonal. It's been a year, and we figured why not bring these informational videos back. I'm going to be showing you everything new in Scratch Island's version 1.39. Let's get into it. We have five new add ons and two add ons with new settings and features. I'm going to go to the first one, which is Asset Conflict Dialog. Go ahead and enable this first one and let me show you what it does. So if you go into the costume editor in any sprite, you can import a costume. Uh, let's say I'm importing this Dango. You see I get this beautiful little Dango, but let's say I was uploading another version that's called the exact same thing, Dango.png. Scratch add-ons will then give me this beautiful new pop-up. So it gives me three options. I can either rename it, replace it, or just don't import it. Without Scratch add-ons, Scratch will do this, it will import and rename it. So if I click that, you'll see it just appends a number two at the end of the name. So it'll be called Dango2. That's how Scratch normally works. I can choose one of these other options, such as import and replace. If I click that, you see it actually didn't add a new costume, it just deleted the old one and uploaded the new version. So pretty much it's just an easy way of replacing any old assets you have with a new version. And also the third option, if I click skip and don't import, you see it kept the blue, pink, and yellow one instead of the traffic light colored Dango. This next add-on is also for the costume editor actually. If I was to turn this on, head back to Scratch, you see I currently have three costumes. Now, whenever I right click any costume, such as Dango, I will get this new option called Delete Others. And what it'll do is it'll give me this pop-up and then it'll delete every single other costume besides the one that I had selected. And also, you might have seen in the pop-up, it said you can go up here to the edit and click Restore Costumes and it'll bring up back your costumes. It looks like it didn't keep the order, so I guess you have to reorder it yourself. Maybe that'll be fixed in a future version. So this next featured update isn't actually a new add-on, nor does it really have any new features. This one's an old add-on that we've had for a while, the message count on extension icon. If you don't know what that is, if I was to enable it and look at the top right where the scratch add-ons icon is, you might be able to see a little badge with a 2. This is actually how many messages I have in scratch right now. And this is an add-on we've had for a while. So what this new update does is automatically disable this add-on by default. All you have to do to fix that is just go into the sketch add-on settings, find message count on extension icon, and just turn it back on. The reason this change was made is, well, I mean, you can read it yourself. It's on GitHub. What languages gave a few reasons. So this fourth featured update is actually some new settings for the customizable block colors add-on. You are able to customize the insertion marker. If you don't know what that is, let's go into the scratch code editor. If you had some code in the code area, like this green hat flag, if you were to snap another block underneath it, you might notice this gray ghost of a block. This is actually called the insertion marker. What the new settings for the add-on actually let you do is customize this. I can actually just straight up disable the insertion marker. Here, you can see, notice if I put another block, nothing appears, but you can still have an outline. So I can just add that and there'll be an outline. That actually looks pretty cool. Oh, that's pretty cool actually. So some of you might like that. So there's actually another option besides none and gray that's colored. What it actually does is you might notice the insertion mark is actually a little blue. That's because I'm using a motion block, which is blue. I guess that means if I was to get a look block, which is purple. Oh yeah, it's purple. Oh yeah, that's really nice. Oh, I like that a lot. You can actually change the opacity of it. The default is 20 and 50. Also, if you're using custom colors, like if I was to set this motion block to this bright red instead, the insertion marker will actually respect that. So you can see it is red. It doesn't keep the old blue color. So we actually have three more add-on updates besides these four. If you were to click this drop down here, you can see three whole new add-ons. For example, this customizable code editor grid. So if I was to turn that on and head into Scratch, you might be able to see when you zoom in, there's actually some dots. This is by default, by the way. What the add-on lets you do is change the style of it. So instead of dots, you can do crosshairs. So it looks like that. Oh, that's pretty big. You can do solid lines. Kind of looks like a sheet of math paper. Vertical lines, horizontal lines, and none. If you just want to straight up get rid of the background altogether. Let me go back to the default dots. This next option, Grid Density, allows you to change how packed together the uh, grid stuff is. Use the default. If I was to increase it to 2, 
You can see it actually gets twice as small. How does that look with the other ones? Crosshairs. <laughs> this room. Crosshairs don't even render on my screen. Actually, it does an auto add on, I think. Snap scripts the grid, if I have to turn that on. You can actually change the grid size with this auto add on. Interesting. I guess you have two add ons to do the same thing now. So this next new add-on is customizable stage monitors. If I go into scratch, show a variable, you can see this up here. This is called a stage monitor with the add-on on. You can actually change how it looks. So for example, transparent values. These are, these are presets. It'll get rid of the orange. There's also 2.0 monitors, so if I turn that on, and you can actually get a style that's very reminiscent of Scratch 2.0. And there's another preset, Translucent Black, and it looks like this. And also this effects list, and you have these options here. You can change the background color, the list header color, you can change the roundness, and you can change the background color of the variable. Let's do this hot pink. I kind of just made an amalgamation here. So we have one more new add-on, and I'll finally get in there. This remaining reply counter. What you might not have actually known is that comment threads in studios, they can have up to 25 replies. I actually didn't even know that. That must be a new thing. This add-on does not make you circumvent this. All it does is just display how many replies are left in a comment thread. For some threads, it'll show how many comments you have left. Like this comment thread is currently 10 replies left. If I was to add another reply to it, Another reply. Post it, you'll see it changes to 9 left. So there's actually a few small changes and bug fixes that I'm just gonna quickly go through. For example, the project video recorder add-on. All that was done was they reorganized the pop-up model a little bit. And also the option to remember your previous selections from the last time you recorded. Another thing that was done was fixing the forum search add-on. It uses a new Scratch database utility, so you can search for stuff again. I'm just search for Hexagon and it works again. And if you ever want to see the full Scratch add-ons changelog, all you gotta do is just go to the Scratch add-on settings and click this version number and it'll take you to the changelog. And we actually removed three add-ons. Looks like profile statistics, local time zone on forums, and forums image uploader were removed. I'm not sure why, um, it sounds like it's because they sort of spam the Scratch API too much. Don't take my word for it, if you really want to, you can find the pull requests that remove them, and there's probably a reason why in there. So that's all the changes for Scratch Outlands version 1.39. I know it's been a few months since the last major update, and it's been a whole year since the last update video. There's also a few other projects in the works. For example, you can go to the Scratch Outlands website, scratchaddons.com, then head to add-ons, and you'll see we actually have add-on docs for a few add-ons. Yeah, there's only four add-ons that are documented. This is a work in progress. Oh hey look, there's me. Also, you should join the Scratch Outlands community Discord server. You can join if you're 13 years old and up. You can go to the Scratch Outlands website, click here, then go to Community Discord. I think the Discord server is a pretty cool place. You can actually submit suggestions for Scratch Outlands, or you can submit bug reports if you don't know how to use GitHub issues. Alright, that's gonna be it for this update video. I was Hexagonal. I'm not Cool Scratcher. Bye bye. <laughs> you can tell this is actually my first time doing a voiceover video. I hope I did this correctly. <laughs>